Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you're here today. Um, Pastor Nathan is still out on study leave. He will be back in the office on Wednesday. So today we have Donna Hurd with us. She will be preaching, and she is the assistant associate pastor at Word Center Presbyterian Church in Sharon. Um, we're very excited that she's here. Please, after worship today, Come and find her and introduce herself and welcome her here to our church. So the announcements today, the first one is men. The Bible, our men's Bible study begins again this Thursday at 6.30 in the rec center. And all of you men are encouraged to join us. We're going to start studying the book of Colossians. So make sure you have some time in your schedule. Come out Thursday night for that. Ladies, your Bible study begins Monday, June 9th at Karen Tinsman's home. We'll be studying Lisa Turker's More Than a Good Bible Study Girl. The books are $10, and they must be reserved by May 19th. See Karen, or call the church office. Yeah, I know, you're all thinking, where's the joke this week? Where's the joke? Oh, it's coming. Don't worry. <laughs> Mission Possible Picnic is Tuesday, May 13th at 5.30 at Pearson Park. Hey, that's not just for families with kids. If you want to come out and have a picnic with us, please join us. We're going to have a great time. There will also be a new member class on Saturday, May 17th from 9 till 2 here at the church. Breakfast and lunch will be provided and child care is available upon request. Please sign up for that class in Galbraith Hall or call the church office if you have any questions. Um, our annual Come Christians Join to Sing concert is Sunday, May 18th at 7, so get that on your calendars and make plans to be here for that. We have some other Save the Date things coming up. The first one is our Pentecost service. We're going to do it again this year with all the other Presbyterian churches in town. It's on Sunday, June 8th. And the service is going to be held at Neshanik High School. And VBS is coming faster than we probably think it's coming. And it's June 16th through 20th. We're going to combine with Clenmore Church again and we're going to meet there. Um, if you would like to volunteer, please see Terry Perry today. And also our annual worship and picnic in Pearson Park is on Sunday, June 22nd. And if you're interested in helping with the summer food program this summer, we're having an organizational meeting tomorrow um, here at the church at 7 o'clock. If you have any questions about that, see Chad Ubry today. So here you go. Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. Here's the better one. I know, hard to believe it could get better, but here you go. Two antennas got married. The ceremony wasn't much, but the reception was excellent. The internet is a beautiful thing. That's all for me. Now Carolyn Moody is going to make an introduction for us. Our first mission spotlight for May is shining on the Newcastle Christian Academy. And so I'm glad to welcome this morning Administrator Marcia Votaw, who will be able to give us a first-hand account of how God is working in our community with and through the staff and the students of this Christ-centered school. So, Mrs. Votaw. Good morning. I'm sorry I don't have a joke. You can you can either applaud or boo. I you know whichever you want to do on that one. Sorry. <laughs> that told you, Brent. All right. Thank you for asking me to come to this morning and to talk to you about Newcastle Christian Academy. God continues to bless us abundantly. First of all, I want to thank you for your financial support. Um, First Church has First Pres has been one of the few area churches who has continued to 
finance and support the Academy since its, its inception in 1991. We also have other connections. Cindy Bailey has been a lifelong teacher there. Tom Johnston is on our scholarship committee. Carolyn Moody comes three mornings a week and volunteers her time to tutor with our students. And I know many of you have been on our board at different times. So our connections are several different ways and we are profoundly grateful for your support. This year, the Academy celebrated its 22nd year as the only non-denominational faith-based school in the county. We minister to students preschool through eighth grade, and if you have seen the billboards and read the press, this fall it will become preschool through ninth grade. It has long been the prayer and the dream of students and parents and staff to ex expand the school beyond the eighth grade, and this year God seems to be leading us to do just that. For at least the first year, our junior high will be 7th, 8th, ninth grade, and it will be housed in Clinmore. And the long-term vision is to increase the school one grade at a time until we reach preschool through 12th grade. It is a very exciting, busy time. The Academy's motto is academic excellence and biblical values, and we believe that God sends children to the Academy for a reason and for a season. The first part of our motto is academic excellence. We have graduated 11 high school valedictorians and a number of top 10 high school students in our, in our tenure. We also have many students who are not just accelerated like that. We are a normal population. Some of our kids are dyslexic, some of them are autistic, some of them have learning disabilities. In other words, we're very normal. But we strive to give them the very best education that we can by emphasizing core subjects, literature, reading, writing, math, science. We also have specials, computer, gym, vocal music, Spanish. But we believe that our greater responsibility beyond those academics is a spiritual instruction. To that end, each day begins with staff devotions and prayer, and then student devotions and prayer. We have adopted a biblical curriculum two years ago that focused us on teaching children a biblical worldview so that when we leave our, do their, our doors, they will be equipped to make decisions filtered through that biblical worldview the rest of their lives. Children learn to pray for each other and for the world at large. We try to teach ch children it's not about them, it's about him. <clears throat> Each month there is a different godly characteristic is emphasized, such as worship, patience, kindness, righteousness. And there are scripture verses that are memorized each month that are appropriate to that. And I counted up, and if a child stays from preschool through eighth grade at present, they will memorize over 100 passages, not just verses, but passages of Scripture. We believe very strongly that when First Timothy 3.16 says that all Scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching and righteousness, we take it seriously. I'm here to tell you that we've had a wonderful year, and God continues to bless us. And what I'm here to ask for is not money. It is to ask for your children. If God is leading you or a grandchild or an extended family member to come to our academy, I ask that you as a body of believers consider helping them in whatever way possible. We believe, again, that God has called children here at the academy for a reason and a season. And if he is calling you, we ask that you are faithful to that call. But I can talk to you about the Academy and what we do and how great we are for a long period of time, but our greatest testament comes from our students and our parents. So I'd like to introduce one of our current eighth graders, soon to be ninth grade, Sarah Baker. Good morning. I have been attending Newcastle Christian Academy for the past nine years, and I'm so excited to look forward to another year of great memories in ninth grade. Everything about the school radiates love and happiness and learning. The students are truly a large group of brothers and sisters that look out for one another. We do our best to lift each other up and to help others in need. Every one of us has unique talents and skills. From artistic abilities to athletic gifts, the students form a diverse blend of creativity that strengthens us as a whole. These differences help us become better people who are ready to help the surrounding world. 
One of the biggest factors in the making of greatness at NCCA is the teachers. They put their time and energy in and out of school into giving their students the opportunity to pursue goals that they wish to achieve. There's truly a connection unlike any other between the kids and staff. They treat us like we're their children and put our needs ahead of their personal lives at times. Without the Christian Academy, I do not think I'd be the person I am today. I have learned to grow and mature with my fellow students. The teachers have molded me and shown me what it is like to live in a beautiful Christian life. Overall, I've been taught to be unique and test my comfort zone. Striving for excellence is something we do each and every day. Since my days at kindergarten, when I first walked through the doors, I knew I wanted to spend as much time as I could in the Newcastle Christian Academy. I am so thankful that the gift of a ninth grade has been given and in the school that I've come to view as a second home. I look forward to the coming years and amazing opportunities they present. Thank you.
Please stand as you are able and join me in the responsive call to worship. Come, let us praise God together. For God is great and we are our praise. Let's tell stories of God's power and majesty, His mighty acts throughout history. Let's remember His mercy and unfailing love, generation after generation. Let's pass these stories along to our children and grandchildren so that they may come to know and love our God. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Come, let us worship God.
Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely by confessing our sins before God and one another by praying together the unison prayer of confession, which is printed in your bulletin. Renewing Spirit, we confess to you that we confuse unity with uniformity and diversity with divisiveness. When we find it difficult to love one another, forgive us and give us new compassion. When we want to stand with the high and mighty, forgive us. Put us next to the poor and oppressed. Help us to see strength in difference. Empower us to build your kingdom in creativity and love. Amen. Continue your own prayers of confession and silence. God's Spirit has been poured out upon all flesh, and we have been made one. We are no longer scattered or divided, but gathered together to build up the kingdom on this earth. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. God has called us to live in peace. Let us now share the peace of Christ with one another. Good morning, children. <laughs> sugar cookies. That's what we call our children, our church, our sugar cookies. Of all flavors, so good to see your beautiful faces this morning. In the Bible, in the book of James, the third chapter in the 10th verse, it says, out of the same mouth comes blessings and cursings, and this should not be. So this ball represents our tongue, and we need our tongues to talk. We can't talk without our tongues. 
And so we, we need to, when we let the Holy Spirit work through us, what we do when we use this tongue, I'm going to throw the ball at you real gently and you can throw it back to me real gently, okay? I'll say words like, thank you. Love you, peace be with you, you are a handsome young man. <laughs> and you are a pretty girl, and you are such a nice person, and you are pretty too. Now, those are really nice words that we use when we, when we say thank you to someone or, or just, just smile at them and, and we let the Holy Spirit guide us. And so, you know, this, this tongue, it's a little bit faded, it's a little bit deflated. It's been used a lot. Okay, now when you use that tongue to say words like, you're stupid. Or words like, shut up. Or words like, I hate you. Or words like, you're retarded. You're fat. You're ugly. Those are not nice words. So this tongue, which, if I said those words, and this represents the tongue. And if I threw this ball at you, how would I throw it at you using words like that? Really hard, right? I'd throw them at you where you're, it would sting your hands because those kinds of words sting a person's feelings. It makes them feel bad. So we ask the Holy Spirit to use this tongue this tongue for gentle words, kind words. And those are the kinds of words that we have to concentrate on because God loves us and God loves for us to be nice to each other, nice to our parents, nice to our teachers, nice to everybody with kind words like I love you and I thank you. Okay, thank you children. Would you pray with me? Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning's scripture reading lesson is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, which can be found on page 1157 of the Pew Bible, as well as projected on the wall. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues 
as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. So good to worship with you this morning. You have a lovely church. First, I want to give honor to God, who is the great love for all of us. He loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son so that we may have salvation. I give honor to God. And I give honor to Pastor Nathan in his absence, and may God bring him back safely where he will continue to do the work that God has blessed him with. And I give honor to all the leaders and members of the Newcastle Presbyterian Church. Again, my scripture is Acts 2 through 14, two, I mean 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Thanks be to God for his word. The title of my sermon is, Wow, I See. But first I will pray. Thank you so much, Father, for these words that you have given me. And may they proceed out of my mouth in the way you want them to. And may the words be heard in the way you want them to, Father. Thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. There's an old song. I'm pretty sure some of you can relate to this song, remember this song. And these are the words to that song. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. I can see obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Oh, yes, I can make it now. The pain is gone. All of the bad feelings have disappeared. Here is the rainbow I've been praying for. It's going to be a bright, bright sunshiny day. Look all around. There's nothing but blue skies. Look straight ahead. Nothing but blue skies. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Pretty sure most of you, some of you, are familiar with this song. And this song was sang by Barb Marley and it was written by a songwriter, actor named Johnny Nash, not Cash, Nash. This song has been popular since 1972 when Johnny Nash wrote and sang it, and it was made popular with a reggae touch by Bob Marley. Johnny Nash and Bob Marley became friends when Nash visited Jamaica. He is living in Texas at the present. This song has been inspiring many, using singers and played in various TV and movies, on soundtracks and radio ad campaigns, 
and in the present is played on the Claritin D allergy commercials. <laughs> it has a message of positive spirituality which shows Donnie Nash, Johnny Nash's gospel roots showing he was raised in gospel music. What made me think of this song was being diagnosed with a fast growing type of cataracts because my eyesight went from bad to worse within six months. And so on March 19th of last year, my left eye was operated on, and on April 2nd, my right eye was operated on. And praise God, because of the ingenuity that he gives mankind, human beings, you can get major eye surgery done one day, and the next day, be able to pre presume with your regular life style. Praise God for that. And I am now blessed to have 2020 vision for distance reading, seeing, and but I have to wear reading glasses for small print. But I am so grateful to have 2020 vision for distance. And I am so grateful to God for having good insurance to cover <laughs> the surgeries. Praise God for that. <laughs> the word Pentecost is a Greek word which means 50th. And it is referred to the 50th day after the Passover when the Jews celebrated the Feast of Weeks, the annual harvest festival. It occurred in early summer in Jerusalem after the conclusion of the grain harvest. It was a joyous occasion when the Israelites expressed their thanks to God for his provisions through the year and renewed their commitment to him, they did. And that is how we should think when we get our pensions, when we get our social security, when we get our paychecks, when we get food stamps, whatever God provides in whatever way for us, we should be thankful to him for his provisions and committed to him. The Holy Spirit manifested his presence like a strong wind. You know how a strong wind feels? It feels like you're going to be blown over. I you know when I was young, I was about uh, 50 pounds when I was a kid. And when the wind would blow really hard, it would just literally almost blow me to the ground. So just think about the wind blowing strongly. And, and, and there were tongues of fire, which are symbols of the powerful manifestation of God's presence. The people's spirits were completely under the control of the Holy Spirit. Their words were his words in other languages. To, to see a sight like that, it would be totally awesome. God made a promise to people that he would send the Holy Spirit from heaven. And that promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit enables people to handle bad life situations in a different way from the way they tried to handle them before they received him. Every person who is saved should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they should rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to witness to others about Jesus Christ. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus states, If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, and for he lives with you and will be with you. Thank you, Lord. Some people handle bad or stressful 
life situations by trying to have a good time, partying, drinking alcohol, doing drugs, and having intimacy with or without love as a release therapy antidote. Singing songs like in my generation, we would sing songs like, living for the weekend, yeah, yeah. A lot of you are familiar with that song, right? Yeah. In the book of Acts, the chapter 10, verse 13, it's stated in Peter's sermon how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. With what did God the Father anoint Jesus for his earthly ministry, of course, the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Who did Jesus say he would send to his disciples from the Father after he himself returned to heaven? Of course, the Holy Spirit. Jesus gives us an example. He did not need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He was already <laughs> in relationship with God. Jesus did what he did to give us an example of what we should do. But he was sinless, so he did not repent of sins. But that's what we, we, we need to do. We, be, we need to become baptized. We need to repent of our sins and then seek the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for that opportunity. In the book of John, Chapter 14, 16, and 26, it states, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. But the comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatever I have said unto you, Notice, it states, the provision would be forever. Hallelujah. There was a glorious day specified in the book of Acts, chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. When individual believers were for the first time baptized and spiritually united by being filled with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. God promises to pour out his spirit in Acts 2.17 to all people that seek the fulfilling. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you can see more clearly how to handle life's ups and downs. They still happen. Bad things still happen. But instead of seeking relief using alcohol, drugs, intimacy, with or without love, and many other things, the relief comes from having an intimate relationship with God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Using the study, guidance, and influence of the Word of God with prayer and meditation, there was a time when I used alcohol as a therapy to handle the tough times of life. But when I accepted Christ in my life, hallelujah, with the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the need for the alcohol was no more. Thank you, Lord. Experiencing the filling of the Holy Spirit high was like no other I have experienced. The way I experience the filling of the Holy Spirit is by singing in tongues with great joy and feeling of being lighter in mind and body. It just felt like a, a, a heaviness just rose from me and just left my mind and left my body. There's no feeling that I can compare it to. It's a wonderful feeling. It was a wonderful feeling. And of course, everyone experiences the infilling differently. 
It may not be as dramatic as mine. I'm a dramatic type of person. The Holy Spirit is gentle, and I believe he respects the individual personality of that person. Some of us have, are more dramatic and some more reserved, like my husband. He's very quiet and introvert, very reserved. So the Holy Spirit came upon him in a different way. Whatever the personality, the acceptance is what's important. The acceptance is what's important. Seek him if you do not have him in your life. Ask to pray. Ask others to pray for you to experience him. You need his guidance. You need his comfort. And warning, warning, warning. He will convict you when you are doing something or thinking of doing something wrong. But that's good. Especially in these times of whatever goes, flow with it. Whatever goes, I'll do it. <laughs> no matter what the repercussions are, the Holy Spirit does not contempt, condemn us, which means a pronunciation of guilt. He does not condemn us, which means a pronunciation of guilt. He convicts us, which means being convinced to not make a mistake that would, if not considered, the consequences could bring great harm in some way. That's conviction. Having the Holy Spirit, we will be able to sing the song, I Can See Clearly Now knowing it is because of the blessed presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. God is the great promise keeper. By promising us the gift of the Holy Spirit after the sacrifice, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As it states in Luke 11, 9 and 10, And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. So ask, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, ask, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, he will help you in many, many ways, especially in those not-so-good times that we experience. And we experience them a lot. There's a lot going on in the country, in the world, a lot of things that are negative and that will bring us down and pull us down and bring about depression and oppression. That is why we need the Holy Spirit to guide us. We need the Holy Spirit to comfort us. We need the Holy Spirit to convict us. We need the Holy Spirit to teach us so that we can get through the not times of life. Seek him. Seek him. Wow, I see. Now those of you that are familiar with the song, sing it along with me. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Now, doesn't that make you feel wonderful? Just knowing it's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day because of the presence of the Holy Spirit and the teachings of him. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
thank you, Father. Thank you for your blessings in every way. We praise you, we glorify you, and we thank you for loving us and blessing us and taking care of us and blessing us to see another day. We are so grateful to you, Father. Oh, God, we pray for those that are sick, oh, God. We pray for your divine healing mercies to be upon them. We pray for those that need financial help, oh, God. We pray for those that need jobs, oh, God. We pray for those that are depressed and oppressed, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we pray your blessings upon them. We pray for the community, Father, and your blessings upon the community, oh, God. And may, may you bless them with companies that will hire the people and keep the youth in the area, Father. Oh, God, we pray for our youth, oh, God, that they have an acknowledgement and relationship with you, Father. Oh, God, we pray that they walk in your will and your way. Oh, God, we praise you and glorify you for your blessings, Father. For you are wonderful. You are glorious. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you for your blessings in every way. Thank you for your love. Oh, God. Thank you for your provisions, Father. Thank you, Father, for your blessings over the finances of the people, Father. And bringing them even more, oh, God, so they'll be able to give even more, oh, God. To glorify you, oh God, we praise you. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Are there any prayers of concern? Praise God. Thank you, Lord.
Before we have the benediction, we will say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Father, we thank you, Father, for your love. And may you bless the people throughout the week, O oh God. Bless them, O oh God, with the peace and love and harmony that they will need throughout the week, O oh God. God, strengthen them and encourage them and guide them. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen.
I think I can make it now 